JobZone is an interactive resource to help all job seekers manage their careers. The JobZone site is available 24-7 so you can use the tool to job search, write your resume and cover letters, explore career options, look up labor market information, compare salaries, and more. The online work search record is a tool in JobZone that allows all job seekers to track and organize your job search, and if you're collecting unemployment insurance benefits, it's an essential way to help you meet UI requirements. You must be logged into JobZone through your ny.gov account to use the work search record feature. Once logged in, click on the work search record link to begin to record your work search activities. The work search record begins with an introduction to the tool, how to use the tabs, and directs users to important UI work search requirements. The site consists of six tabs, an intro tab, a UI requirements tab, adding new employer contacts or activities tab, a history tab, reports tab, and an address book. Adding new employer contacts and activities will build work search reports. Once you have read the introduction, click on the UI work search requirements tab if you are certifying for unemployment insurance benefits. The online work search record is an essential tool when meeting your work search requirements for UI. If you are collecting unemployment insurance, you must follow the work search requirements for each week that you certify for weekly benefits. This section reviews those requirements and your responsibilities when looking for work. You will notice three buttons at the bottom of the screen. The previous button will go back to the tab that you left off on. The home button will bring you back to the job zone landing page. The next button will move you to the next tab. Please note, you should avoid using the back arrow in any job zone screen. If you do, you may be logged out of the system. Once done reviewing the requirements, click next to continue. Now, let's take a moment to demonstrate how Taylor uses the work search and job zone to add activities and create reports to keep track of her work search efforts. First note that the fields with the yellow dot are required. Taylor clicks the calendar to enter the date that she conducted the activity. Next, she clicks the drop down arrow to choose an activity type. There are three choices under activity type, employer contact, union hiring hall contact, and work search preparation activity. In this case, Taylor's activity type was an employer contact. Next, she selects the activity description. There are several descriptions to choose from under employer contact. They are inquiry, responded to state job posting, responded to internet job posting, submitted job application, sent resume, interviewed for position, registered with temp and or staffing agency, or other employer contact. Since Taylor submitted a resume to a particular employer, she selects Sent Resume as her activity description. Next, Taylor chooses the method of contact with the employer, or in this case, how she sent her resume. Since Taylor emailed her resume, she selects that option. She types in the title of the position she applied for. Please note, if the job posting contains a job reference number, you can add it here. From the drop-down, Taylor chooses the statement that best describes the result of her employer contact. She selects the option, waiting for a response. She continues down the page to finish the required fields. Taylor enters the contact name, then the contact person's title. Next, she enters the name of the business or organization. And lastly, Taylor enters the contact person's email address as she indicated that her method of contact to the employer was through email. She scrolls down to the bottom of the form and clicks Save. The Save button is extremely important in this process. If Taylor had not clicked Save after entering all of her information, the entire activity may be lost. Once the new activity or employer contact has been saved, the system will give her a message denoting that the save was complete. To add another employer contact or activity to her work search record, Taylor scrolls down to the bottom of the page to find the button. She clicks the button that reads, Add New Contact or Activity. She starts to fill out the form as she did before, making certain that she fills in all the required fields. Again, Taylor clicks the date of the contact. Next, she chooses the activity type. On July 18th, she completed a work search preparation activity. She must now select an activity description. Under Work Search Preparation Activity, there are several descriptions to choose from including Company or Industry Research, 
career exploration, one-stop workshop or seminar, attended Department of Labor appointment, LinkedIn networking, other social website networking, received job coaching from one-stop or Department of Labor, resume development or resume revision, registered with Job Bank or Job Scout, worked with Headhunter or Outplacement Agency, or other preparation activity. Taylor attended a New York State Career Center workshop, so she chose one stop workshop or seminar. Although the activity notes section is optional and not a required field, Taylor chooses to enter that she attended a resume workshop at her local New York State Career Center and she clicks save. Once the save is complete, Taylor will enter another activity. She clicks the button at the bottom of the page again to begin the process. She clicks the calendar to enter the date of the activity and the activity type. On July 16th, Taylor submitted a job application. She chooses Company Website for the method of employer contact. She types in the title of the position that she applied for. She must now select the result of the contact. In this case, she indicates that she received confirmation of her submitted application. Since Taylor had already had contact with Albany Medical Group, and this is an additional contact with that company, she clicks the drop-down to reveal the companies already in her contact list. She selects Albany Medical Group. If the contact person is the same as in the last activity with Albany Medical Group, Taylor would click the box next to that person. This would pre-fill all of the original contact information, so Taylor would not have to re-enter it. This time, the contact person is not Jane Smith. Taylor clicks Add New Contact for Albany Medical Group. She types in the Bone and Joint Unit as the contact name. Next, she types the contact title. Since she applied online through the company website and did not have a direct contact person's name or title, she enters the unit she is applying to as her contact name. Then, she enters Hiring Manager for the contact title. Since she indicated that her method of contact was company website, Taylor enters the URL for the Bone and Joint Unit at the Albany Medical Group, then clicks Save. Taylor selects the History tab to review her activities and make an edit to an existing activity. The History tab is useful for reviewing a comprehensive list of all the activities you have entered to date. If Taylor had another contact with the company, she would add a separate activity. However, in this case, she is just adding additional information she obtained. Taylor finds the activity on July 16th and clicks Edit. This will pull up the original activity. She would like to add a note to the activity for future reference. She enters the information, then clicks Save. Now Taylor will enter another activity to her record. She enters information in all the required fields. On July 15th, she made another employer contact. She chooses inquiry as the description of the activity and phone as the method of contact. She enters clerical support for the position name. Under the result of contact, Taylor indicates that there were no job openings at the time. She enters the contact name, title, and business name. Since Taylor chose phone as the method of contact, she types in the contact person's phone number. She clicks Save. Taylor decides she would like to print the history of her work search. She once again clicks the History tab to view her work search records. In the History tab, you can export the list of your activities to your personal computer. She clicks the option to export this page. She chooses Excel as the method of display. Once the page is exported to Excel, the download is available on your computer. Excel will start to open. Once opened, the data will appear in spreadsheet format. You can expand the columns by double-clicking the line between the letters. To save the file to her computer, Taylor clicks File, then Save As, then chooses the location to save the spreadsheet to her computer. 
Each time Taylor enters activities, her history will grow. Under the Reports tab, Taylor has the ability to request several types of reports from her saved activities. It also allows her to print them and save a local copy to her computer. She clicks the week ending date that she wants to generate a report for. Then she clicks View Reports by the Week Ending Date. The report for the week ending July 20th will be created. She scrolls down to show the options for saving the report. Taylor chooses to save her report as a PDF. She clicks the Save Local Copy button, then clicks the downloaded PDF of her report. She reviews it before saving it to her computer. Once saved, she clicks out of this report to start a new one. Taylor must go back to the previous screen to choose another report option, so she clicks the previous button. Remember to never click the back arrow in Job Zone. She clicks the button to review reports for the past four weeks. Now the report shows all of her activities in the last four weeks. Taylor would like to print a copy of this report, so she scrolls down to find the print option. Taylor would now like to create a customized report. She must first name her report for future reference. She begins to select the dates she would like included in her report, then clicks Save to generate her custom report. Taylor clicks the Previous button to find the report. She clicks on the report name. Notice that this report includes all the dates that Taylor selected previously. She clicks Previous once again to go back to her report's homepage. Now Taylor would like to upload a report that she previously saved to her computer. She first must select the report from her computer files, so she clicks the Select Report button. She clicks Desktop, which is where her report was saved. She clicks the file that she wants to upload, then clicks Open. The file will appear. Taylor clicks Upload. Notice that the uploaded report now appears on the list. The last tab on the Work Search Record tool is the address book. All contacts entered into the Work Search Record will be found here. Taylor clicks on the address book tab. Once the address book opens, Taylor clicks on the contact that she wants to view. Notice that all the contact information that Taylor entered regarding William Jones is captured in one dialog box. Once Taylor has finished updating her work search record, she logs out of her account. Be sure to check out all of the features on JobZone. The online work search record is like keeping a journal of your job search efforts. Everything is saved in one spot and ready to access whenever you need the information.